Once again, we welcome you to Inside the Hawks, our weekly podcast that focuses in on all things SJU athletics. I'm Matt Martucci, and this week an abbreviated edition of the podcast because of the fact uh, that Hawk men's basketball is on the road, suffering uh, just a six-point loss against Dayton the other night, and then heading to St. Louis on Saturday to take on the Billikens and uh, try and pick up their first Atlantic 10 Conference win of the season. We figured it would be a good idea to showcase one of the Hawk freshmen in this week's edition of Inside the Hawks, and that freshman being C.J. Aiken, the 6'9 center from Plymouth White Marsh, coming up with 15 points and a career-high nine blocks, seven of which came in the first half in last Saturday's loss to George Washington. So we decided we would put together a montage of Aiken's best plays from that GW game, including uh, many of those nine blocks and even some of the offensive uh, efficiency that C.J. Aiken played with. So what you're about to hear, the C.J. Aiken montage right here on Inside the Hawks. The St. Joseph Sports Network, where C.J. Aiken happens. Smith, the drive in, has his shot thrown by Aiken, and the rebound down to Galloway. Up to Aiken, and then Quarles. Left wing Aiken tries a three and knocks it down. They'll say he was on the line. C.J. Aiken, active at both ends of the floor. A block shot at one end, and the made jumper at the other. And the Hawks have their first lead at 6-5. Guest swings top of the key to the driving Smith. Stops left of the lane, trying to back down Hilliard. Turns toward the baseline. Shot thrown out again by Aiken to the corner for Darius Quarles. Here comes St. Joseph's. Quarles bounces down low. Hilliard dribble under the basket, uses the rim, and makes the reverse layup. Six for Idris Hilliard, and again, it's the block shot by Aiken that creates the offensive opportunity. 22-17, Smith turns into the lane for GW. Left hand hook, no good. Katuka's hook try, thrown out by Aiken. Down to Galloway, drives the lane, goes in on Bynes and is fouled. Jones, near sideline as we are under a minute to play. Gets up to Hilliard, far side, and a handoff to Jones. Moves to the right wing, out to cross guy. Standing about 25 feet or so from the basket. Hawks work it left side of the baseline. Aiken flies up in the air and throws down the two-hand slam. C.J. Aiken way up there. That's Southwest Airlines country for the freshman. Swings to the right corner. Quarles passes up an open look at a three. Stops at the foul line. Swings Aiken. He's not bashful. Right corner three hits it. C.J. Aiken for the second time this game. 12 points for Aiken, and that's a big one to make it 48-41. So that's the C.J. Aiken montage here on Inside the Hawks. And we also thought it would be a good idea this week to have you hear some of the Film Artelli radio show, Hawk Talk, which was in its second week at J.D. McGillicuddy's just this past Monday. So without further ado, here's Phil Martelli and Joe Lenardi in one of the segments of Hawk Talk. a little bumper music to take us in to segment two of Hawk Talk here at McGillicuddy's 33 Brookline Boulevard in beautiful downtown Havertown. Joe Lenardi and Phil Martelli with you for uh, another three quarters of an hour or so. Uh, we're going to go to the phones in just a minute, but you can get in line on the phone line at 877-990-WNTP. That's 877 990 Nine six eight seven and Phil, we have a prodigal caller who actually sent us an email last week to apologize for not calling. So we'll give him double time tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is, live from Wilmington. Let's welcome Timmy. Timmy, welcome to Hawk Talk. How you doing, Timmy? This is not a good sign. Like there we go. Like our deep bench and all these athletic guys. I was wondering if uh, we're looking to become more of a run and gun kind of offense or more of a half court kind of set. No, Timmy. If, if I had uh, my option, would be to play faster offensively than we have been playing. I think so, a, a lot of that depends on really getting kind of uh, stellar point guard play. Uh, we we would love uh -huh. to we would love to play uh, a faster style, uh, 
and I've been on our bigger players about I don't think that they're transitioning as much as I would want them to do from defense to offense. It can't just be run down the floor with our guards and uh, get a penetration and just jumpers. You have to put some threat on the defense that you're going to shoot layups. And uh, mm -hmm. actually, we shoot more layups this year than we have in the past. But you, you're right on. I, w I, would, I would love to be in a situation where maybe not Duquesne-like, where Duquesne averages 81, 82 points a game. But if we yeah, could get, if we could get to 75, I would love that. Mm -hmm. And then um, my second question would uh, be, like last year, how we kind of beat Duquesne. We were a little bit of the underdog, but uh, how does that uh, kind of pull into the game plan this year and uh, with confidence and everything? Oh, Dayton, the mean. date where we beat Dayton last year. Well, I actually spoke to the players today about that and said, Dayton going home after two league road games Ooh. and uh, getting beat by UMass, it, they're going to have an excited fan base. Uh, and I use the example of this league is not always balanced because Dayton goes in 13-4, and four, 17 games. 11 of them are home games. They have played very close games. Uh, there, is some, there is some draw from last year's game, Timmy, in, in that certain things worked, uh, including zone defense against Dayton, hey. so we know they'll prepare for some things, uh, but we don't want to walk away from them because we were very successful with it last year. All right. All right, Timmy, Thank take you very care. much. Thank you. Thanks for the call, all and right. uh, we want to remind all our callers that uh, when you do get on the air, just turn down that radio a little bit because uh, we want to eliminate that feedback here to those listening at McGillicuddy's. Uh, Phil, an email question that came in. Uh, talking about the athletic ability of two-year freshman forward C.J. Aiken and uh, Ron Roberts. I'll just read it. With both C.J. and Ron, we've seen several instances where their vertical leaps to grab a rebound or block a shot have been incredible, and I think we'd all agree that that's true. Uh, we've seen assistant coach Jeff Arnold gesture more than once to lob passes to one of those guys, and I remember one nice pass to C.J. where he went up and slammed it home. Uh do you want to execute more plays like that? Is it a play or is it just an eye contact thing? Uh, and and the, the questioner asks, is there a risk of turnovers or injuries? But, you know, there's such an athletic advantage with particularly the two of them. Would you like to see it more? Do you practice it? Uh, or is it just kind of a flow of the game type of thing? Well, we would like to see it more. And part of this attack offense that we're running with the dribble is to get them involved by putting the ball uh, up top. In fact, we were all over Langston in the uh, Duquesne game. He broke the defense down and threw a bounce pass to C.J. when I remember the actual that. pass is, is uh, up in the air. I'm not, I'm not concerned about injury uh, as much as I am execution. And today in practice, uh, Tay threw a great one to Ron Roberts. And basically, it wasn't completed. But the idea was the idea was spectacular, and it was close to being a perfect execution. And we then stopped and talked to the team about time and place. If we're down 10, we don't want to be throwing alley-oops all over. But <laughs> right. with the way those two kids go up, and right now, that's their lane offense. That's, that's their that's, best that's play what they, at the basket. That's what they can do at the basket. So... Uh, and that's one of the reasons, to be honest with you, Ron's rotation on sa uh, Saturday was short in the first half was because he had a chance, and we, th and we threw a nice one, and he, and he didn't take advantage of it. Right. So there was, he was off his game. I mean, he, he took four shots in five minutes. He had two or three fouls in, in his five minutes. Yeah, his minutes were down after playing a just pretty great, great stretch. Play, playing great against Duquesne, and then – and Siena. Uh, and, and didn't quite have it. And yet he played great against Siena without taking a shot. Right. So, you know, it's the up and the down, but more up with both of them. But with the athletic ability and the wingspan, yes, the answer is yes. Also, runouts is a big deal with them. We have to get more, and uh, they, they, haven't, they haven't grasped that totally yet. I'll ask a question about C.J. Aiken. Um, and, and this is more a comment on the other guys on the floor defensively. 
Phil, is he blocking too many shots? Because he's getting too many opportunities to block shots off of penetration. No, Joe, he, he's blocking a lot of his own man shots. Okay. Because what has happened is people say the M.O. is as the kid Lawson from Creighton or just kind of back him in. Look at his weight. We can we can go at him. Uh, CJ is a is a very smart defensive player. He he has a nice basketball IQ. Uh, he's been well schooled. He gets to the right spots, and he's become more assertive. So he's going after. Uh, I I thought early in the year he kind of waited. Now he he seems to be very energized by. Uh, challenging shots and getting after them. I mean that 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 to me is a really significant number. I was here when Rodney Blake played, but to see nine block shots and it was at least nine. And one of the things we talked about today was on two of his block shots, GW recovered the ball and scored six points off of those block shots. That can't be. That becomes a loose ball once he blocks it. And then you just have to. Win the hustle play. You have to win the loose ball play. The 50-50 is what we call it. Right. And do you track those kinds of things? We don't really track them, but we'll, what we'll do is in the plus-minus, in the plus-minus, uh, we'll bring those plays up and say, you know, th- this was a key play. This this was this was uh, could turn momentum, and we want to see more of that. Phil, you talked a little bit about uh, wanting to get more out of CJ than just block shots and dunks. Uh, how much is, you know, challenging a freshman too much? and Or do you just simply have to continue to put the next challenge in front of them or they plateau? Well, Joe, they've played 15 games. So enough is enough with, you know, they're three freshmen and a sophomore. They're basketball players. And they're basketball players for a reason because we thought that they could be successful in this league. And, yeah, there's still things to learn. We had to spend five, ten minutes after practice today. This is a long trip. Make sure you pack accordingly. Those that are in intercession, bring your computer. Those are veteran things that you don't talk about. But we've talked about anything that people can, can imagine. Where's your practice gear? Back at the room. Why? I was going to wash it. No, we have an equipment room for that. Right. Did you shower after a game? You think, well, no, that can't be, but that's that, those are some of the things. Teaching them how to watch tape has all been part of this. And, and that's been, that's been uh, exciting, to be honest with you. Did your mom call you to say, make sure you know, it's a long trip, get a lot of underwear? My mom didn't. Judy probably did. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting you should say that, Phil, because we, we have uh, a three-part question here. And I think these are excellent questions, uh, maybe of increasing difficulty, but uh, you'll take them, I know. Uh, The first is, with this group of young players, what do you consider progress? Better play each day. Uh, Just just a better play uh, each day. And, you know, some people might say it's statistical. So I want to see if we rebound better. Or I want to see if we shoot better. To me, it's if, did we prepare better? Did we warm up better? Did we communicate better? And that's a, that's a major concern because I see it all throughout basketball. Communication is losing its way. And it, my team's no different. It can be very, very quiet. Uh, so I'm looking for... That's what I, uh, th- what I consider to be progress. Uh, and, I, and I'm not into, you know, moral victories and saying, <laughs> man, oh, man, we got walloped by Western Kentucky, but even down big numbers against Duquesne, we kept going. That, that, that to me is so, so empty uh, and, and hollow. I'm, I'm only interested in my measuring stick is what was better? What was better? And at the same time, watching for, for that stagnant kind of malaise and the glossed over eyes and them saying, is it Monday or Tuesday? And is this Are a you two seeing hour? that? Not, not one time yet. Not one time. And is it good that they're not yet back in school? 
that they're just focused on basketball, well, or does school give them a routine well, and eight, a structure? Eight of our guys are in class now. They're okay. in the intercession at okay. night, and and like Saturday, it was unusual. We did a walkthrough at eight thirty rather than a shoot around, and then guys went to class from nine until twelve thirty, and then came back, and then came back and had to be back in the uh, Hagen Arena at two thirty. So the the uh, routine starting next Tuesday. It's the biggest challenge that we face academically because they're used to being five, five weeks off and kind of at their pace. But our practice sessions will be at 3.30. We have a pretty good feel for how we're going to prepare, and we're going to maintain uh, strength and conditioning to make sure that, 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 is a, uh, that that's a bonus as we do go through the rest of the year. I want to get to the rest of... Uh these questions when we come back, including parts two and three of this one. But we're up against a break, so we'll take it here. He's Phil Martelli. I'm Joe Lenardi. Give us a call on the other side at 877-990-WNTP, 877-990-9687. You are listening to the St. Joseph Sports Network. Thanks to Phil Martelli and Joe Lenardi for Hawk Talk Radio this past week. And, of course, the fine staff at J.D. McGillicuddy's for their exceptional service every Monday night. We will be there until early March and look forward to many more weeks over at McGillicuddy's. Join us once again next week for another episode of Inside the Hawks, our weekly podcast that focuses in on all things SJU athletics. We'll have more from both men's and women's basketball, including a sit-down once again with Hawk women's basketball head coach Cindy Griffin to talk about the team's success. But for now, for St. Joseph's All Access, I'm Matt Martucci. We'll talk to you next week, Hawk fans.